started with 500 on my way to a meal closed over 100 deals can't change us You want to ask yourself every single day, am I doing everything possible to reach that goal? Don't get too far of yourself. Stay in the moment, stay grounded, and continue to push every single day. Welcome to the Game Changer Podcast. I'm your host, Elijah Bryant, and we got a special guest with us today. We got Ray. Welcome back. How again. you doing? Good to see you again. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's a so it's, it's great to have you again, you know? Yeah. How has life been? It's been very well. Um, you know, obviously I lost a lot of weight. I'm <laughs> no, no tummy anymore, right? So Definitely I'm, noticed that you got, yeah. you've been uh, running, training. Yeah, I did a lot of training and did a lot of deals. Uh, I think that was like last year I came here, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you was much bigger then, <laughs> but yeah. You know, last uh, last time we talked, we you know went over your story. So I guess this time we could go over more so your process, right? Because mm. system and process is how people are gonna close deals. So let's let's start from the beginning. How do you find a market? Yeah, there are six steps, and the first step is absolutely choose a market, and uh, that's why I love land. You can do it anywhere, and you can do it virtually in any market. Mm -hmm. So for me, choose a market is right now is very randomly. So I drive around, I see a sign, oh, this is a city of what? I will search what county, mm -hmm. and I will see if there's any sold activity. I just my mail is there. I'm in about 50 different counties right now. So you drive like the U.S. and you're seeing what counties from the drive? Yeah, and that's one way to find what county and uh, or. Uh, I talk to friends and uh, ask them where do they live. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, for example, me and Joe McCall just had a live event and yeah. we went to Missouri. I never been to a Missouri market. So mm -hmm. I mailed it there, I already got a couple of deals. Wow. Yeah. So cool. yeah. now that's on finding an area. Now in terms of, are you finding builders first? Are you selling your deals to builders? Uh, that's something I do a little bit different. I don't really wholesale the land. Mm -hmm. uh, because if I do wholesale, I can I have to stay in a certain markets. So, so when you say yeah. wholesale, you mean assign the contracts? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I so do, you're I buying. Not, I do not do wholesale. I do not do the contract, but I buy it, mm -hmm. and then I would just list it with the agent. So I save a lot of time on the selling process. But Ray, you know, what if um that new person? I don't have that much capital. How am I buying the land? Well, you how know, can I make that happen? I think when people saying I do not have money means one thing. Uh, one thing is they are not really committed to this game yet. Mm. And if you're really committed, there's nothing ever will stop you. Let's say you don't have the money, but you definitely have a rich friend. Mm. Right? If a guy who never met you and they tell you, hey, Elijah, I have a deal that worth 100,000, right now it's under contract for 30,000 would you pay for it I'm paying for that <laughs> <laughs> so definitely yeah. so that's that's an excuse not really mm -hmm. a reality so that's one of the belief we have to crack at the beginning of course uh, you can do some wholesaling at the beginning to you know get some uh, capital that's why yeah. I love just buying it because uh, people love cash and when you say tell them I, I can pay cash and normally they'll give you a huge discount mm. yeah so that's a tip right there in your marketing mention that I'm paying with cash. A lot of people would just make an offer, but yeah. not being specific. I'm making a cash offer right. and I might, you know, uh, get the seller to sell a lot more. Yeah. And after I find a market and the next thing I would do is I would get a list of all the people who own land in the county and I would look at what is the assess value. So here's another small trick. Uh, normally, the land worth more than the size value. So yeah, the all land, the time. Yeah. So what I do is I would offer a percentage of the size value, mm. and then I'll mail it out, and the people who are interested will call me back, or they call me to curse on me, right? So this is your marketing. So your marketing is strictly direct mail right now. Right. All right. So yeah. on the mail, you're sending a blind offer to mm -hmm. every single seller. Yeah, to all of them. So, can you explain what a blind offer is? 
Uh, just a two page letter and the first page is talk about our company. Second page is just a purchase agreement with an offer price on there. And that's a percentage of the sales value. How do you get it to where every lot is getting a percentage uh, like specifically on every lot? You get what I'm saying? Because this one could be worth 10, this one could be worth 50. How are you doing that? Because their assessment value is all different, mm -hmm. right? I just do a percentage, let's say 60%, mm -hmm. and then just drag it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's it, five minutes. Like on the Excel. <laughs> right. Okay, gotcha. Right, easy. I don't really go into that and look for specifically. I believe uh, volume is more important than quality. Why you say that? Because um, a lot of time you, you hear people saying, you know, you just have to mail a couple hundred letters and make each, you know, offer price very correctly, yeah. I think it's a big waste of time. Because if you can do it more volume, and you can, of course, get a deal. Yeah. Right? Uh, so quantity is better than quality. Mm. And then when the call comes in, I will negotiate again. Yeah. So, you know, when I get a deal, people just saying, you know, no way, right? You get the land for that price. Mm. For example, I close the deal today. The land the realtor just told me is worth about a hundred thousand is in Arizona. Yeah. And I bought it for thirty thousand. Mm. Yeah. And you're gonna are you reselling it or are you holding on to it? Yeah, and the realtor gonna go check and out the market and list it, yeah. Got you, wow. Yeah. So now all right, so you're using realtors as your buyer. Correct. And so uh, how do you evaluate a deal, right? Let's say I'm new to the game. I'm joining this area that I just drove around seeing and I'm making offers, but I don't know how to evaluate the deal. What would you say for that? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of factors, but as far as the price is very simple uh, because all land, they're like similar in the same subdivision, same size, maybe same uh, level, mm -hmm. um, Maybe, you know, what's on their, on their land? There's nothing on top of their land. So mm -hmm. there's not, nothing really concerns you. There's no toilet, no roof, right? Mm -hmm. And the uh, first thing I would look at is the for sale price before I buy it. Mm -hmm. So I would look at the same similar size and how much is for sale right now. Oh, okay. Right? Let's say everything for sale for 70. Yeah. And uh, I'm not trying to buy it for 65. Right. Right. I'm, I'm trying to be like absolutely the lowest when I list the land. Yeah. So if everyone's listed for above 70, I would, I would sell my land for like, say, let's say 63,000. Yeah. That's the first factor, but that's not the most important thing because everybody can list their land for whatever price they want. want yeah. But the sold price is more important. Mm. Right, I would say, I would see what is the sold nearby and what is the least sold for. Mm. And I would compare that to the purchase price I'm buying. You're doing this through Zillow? Redfin. Redfin, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Redfin. So you're looking at the sold property and what's sold the least, you're offering lower than that. Absolutely. And yeah. that's your basically bottom line price right there. Absolutely. So, but on top of that, there's a lot more to consider. Let's say if the land is a landlocked, wetland is in the flood zone, it's a slope land or it has a lot of trees, no utility nearby. Those mm -hmm. are all factors, but there's not too much you need to consider. Yeah. How can somebody, you know, check those things like wetlands, uh, you know, slope, things like that? Um, you know, there's a couple of tools. They are all free. That's a good news mm -hmm. for me. You know, if you talk, if you know me, everything for me is cheap, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't even have a CRM. I use Google Sheet. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So we gonna get you a good. <laughs> we gonna get you a CRM. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, because uh, you know we we can talk about that later. My mentor yeah. told me revenue first. Don't talk. Don't think about all those cost first yeah uh, but um, wetland there's if you google wetland checker mm -hmm. there is a website you can check put your app webs uh, put your address there you can check if the land is a wet wetland and you said this is Refin checker it's called wetland checker wetland checker yeah okay. and there is a fema flood zone f-e-m-a flood zone map 
you can put your address there you can see if the land is in the flood zone okay and there are some tools in google earth you can see if there's a measurement tool you can see if your land is flat for the slope yes okay perfect yeah. yeah so you don't do any like surveys on the land when you buy them or environmental studies if i have to yeah if the title company says i need a survey to close the deal mm. i will have to do that so you would close the deal without doing a survey <laughs> sometimes most I'll, of be, the time. <laughs> I'll be scared yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> i did that one yeah. time and i'm like nah i'm not doing this again just because yeah. on the back end my buyers are doing the survey so now what if they don't like what they see? Yeah. Now I'm, you know, 27,000 on this property just held, you know, so it could still be a bad deal. So, yeah. you know, make sure y'all do a survey, please. Yeah. But all right, so now in the acquisition side, are you picking up these direct mail calls? Uh, do you have a team doing that? Uh, I do, I pick up myself. I actually enjoy the process because I like uh, kind of negotiate with the seller, mm -hmm. right? Sometime, when I get frustrated in life, I like, love to talk about the haters, right? People who call me and curse on me or curse back on them, you know? Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I had to stop doing that. <laughs> you know, it's not a good habit, but you do have that one seller that just irks your nerves that you have to, you know, bark back sometimes. <laughs> but, right, but everything goes to a voicemail. I don't pick it up right away. Yeah. And there are four kind of people I actually don't call with them back anymore. What are those four uh, type of people? The first is uh, they, of course, they mad at me. Mm -hmm. They say bad words, right? Yeah. And second kind is they say they're a realtor. Mm. And uh, I don't really like to work with realtors. It's nothing bad on their parts. It just, um, I have this third party here. So it's mm -hmm. hard to negotiate. And uh, the third kind is the, pe the people tell me, Ray, I'm just not selling the land. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you call them, right? And uh, the fourth kind is they want the price for higher, mm. right? And um, I don't, I'm not trying to pay more than what I offer. Yeah. yeah. So it got to be considerably lower than what I offer. Okay. Yeah. You know, so before this podcast, you mentioned that you closed, I think you said 200 deals? 210. Yeah. 210 deals in, in the, the last eight months. Yeah. So like let's talk about your biggest deal out of those 200 deals um i think uh, just uh, there's a land i bought it for uh 40 something thousand total and, where at uh, in texas okay yeah it's a three acre land uh we negotiate long time the seller has to fly from other country to come here to sign off the deed wow and uh, actually pay for their flight mm. Right, and uh, but after we close it, um, I just posted it myself. I didn't really. You did like a, a builder. You did like a flat fee. Yeah. How? How uh, was it like a website that you used? Yeah, it's oh. a ninety-nine dollar post your land there, and it's called brokerless.com. B r o k e r l e s s dot com. Or can you use that nationwide or just Texas? Yeah, I think besides Hawaii, they're pretty much doing everywhere. Okay. Yeah, some states that cost more. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I posted it there for 120000 And then within a week, we I don't have any calls. I was like, crap, maybe I listed for so high, right? <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden, a week later, I got calls pretty much every hour. Wow. You know, somehow it just... Some, it do yeah. be like that because <laughs> right now we're listing a lot of our properties to utilizing yeah. realtors, uh, you know, flat fee websites, things like that. And the first week you won't get no calls. You'd be like, yeah. damn, did I make a mistake? <laughs> and then your phone would just start ringing back to back, emails, yeah. everything. So it really be like that. Yeah. And then this guy offered uh, for 109. Mm. So I just accept it. Okay. So, Man, that's yeah. that's like sixty, seventy thousand. Wow. Yeah, I paid uh, two hundred for the drone vi videos. Mm -hmm. That's all the cost. Wow. Yeah. How much? How much was your mail? Um, mail cost? Yeah. Uh, you know, at the beginning from October, I, when I decided to to get a lot of deals, I yeah. mailed more than a hundred thousand per month. So right now it become a, a lot less, about yeah. 40 to 50. 
So you're spending yeah. forty to fifty thousand a month for meal. Uh, forty to fifty thousand pieces. Oh, like okay. Each okay, meal okay. is about fifty-five cents. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. about half of that. That's still that's yeah. a different ball game you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I, it makes sense though because you got the system, you got the process. So that money, you know, if you invest it, you're gonna make a return. You're not really gambling because you know the process, and it's been working for you. You know, so mm -hmm. like. For somebody new coming in, how can they do it? They they don't have twenty, thirty thousand to invest. Mm -hmm. What can they do to get a deal? Um, besides the skill or what the actions, I think it's more of a mindset. Okay. And there are a lot of things stop a new beginner to be successful at this game or any real estate investing game. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would say is they got easily distracted. Mm. And uh, they want to maybe join different programs and try to summarize whatever they want to summarize. And they want to learn more. They always feel I'm not ready. So I'm ready. I'm going to take action later when I feel I'm ready, but they never will be. Mm -hmm. So don't get distracted too often. Just let's say they find you just try your program and uh, do whatever you tell them to do. Yeah. yeah. Don't look over for another Ray guy for another program. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. Second thing is they have to really have it before they have it in their mind. So what, what does it mean? Uh, you, you cannot have anything if you don't have it in your mind. Let's say this table was created twice. Mm. The first time it was in their mind. Mm -hmm. And then they believe, oh, I can do this. And then this thing is created. It's the but same this thing. is a physical product. How yeah. can somebody see a deal like, you know? Um, you know, it's just pretty much like religion. You, you, nobody has seen G Jesus, but mm -hmm. why do we believe them, mm. right? So uh, it, at, the fr at the first stage, normally it's from other people's belief or testimonials. Yeah. Let's say I see you do deals. And I was, I'm like, okay, I'm no difference. You know, I, I'm as smart as you. Why can't I do it? Yeah. So that might be the first stage. Limiting belief. Right. And yeah. then once you, you convince yourself you can do that, and that's how you get it done. And then you start to mail. And then you start to take calls. Because if you don't believe you can get a deal, you will stop doing that. You kind of mm -hmm. wait. You'll send that first uh, mail campaign out. Yeah. You probably get two calls from it. They don't equal a deal, and then you stop. Absolutely. Not knowing if you send out another batch, it's probably a 20K deal waiting to call you. Consistency. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and uh, the, the other thing is, um, they just have to be, you know, consistent and, uh, you know, just be patient. I mean, land flipping is the easiest thing ever. I tell people, if you cannot do land flipping, don't even consider houses. Mm. And that's much harder again. It is. Yeah. And I did both. So <laughs> it was way different. Uh, so now, why would you say land is easy? I know you've closed a lot of deals, hundreds of deals. I closed hundreds of deals. But like, why would you say it's a easier game? Um, I guess people just don't like it or they don't see the value to the land. Uh, the first thing is every single year you have to pay the property taxes, mm -hmm. right? Right now I have like this 200 deals, the property taxes are killing me, right? So I gotta sell them. That's uh, the same with the seller. They don't wanna spend their money for something that never bring them cash flow. Mm -hmm. For a house, you can rent it out. Mm. Uh, but for land, there's no income. And secondly- And can I, can I go in on that a little bit? Yeah. Cause I'm experiencing that now. You know, I bought seven lots myself, right? And I had to pay property tax this year on it. And I'm like, yo, I just paid thousands of dollars on taxes on something that's not bringing me a return. Absolutely. Now the value went up throughout the time, but I'm like, if I did this on scale, it kind of would be detrimental. It's not really that smart to hold the land unless right. you're building on it. Yeah. You know? And uh, the county always try to raise the value, mm -hmm. right? Because they can collect more taxes, mm. right? 
that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, you know, if you don't cut the trees or grass, maybe the county will give you a lien, mm. like a ticket, right? And uh, people don't have emotion to the land. Yeah. A lot of them live off state, mm -hmm. you know. Or they inherited it. Yeah. They, yeah. they have no idea how much the land is worth. I just mailed a special list um, I got from my friend. Uh, it's a probate list. Mm. So You got probate of land? Probate, yeah. You How know. can I? Yeah, you gotta tell me off camera, <laughs> but okay, you gotta right. probate, okay. Yeah, so you know that, I think that all, all, out of all the 200 deals I got, more than a third is from that list. Wow. Yeah, because their family passed away. Yeah. They, the spouse, the surviving spouse, have no idea how much the land is worth. Yeah. And, and, and those are when the best deals come yeah because they're like i just want the cash you tell them you're giving them ten thousand they taking that yeah but you know we can make a lot on the back end so Absolutely. do you have any last words for the viewers um i think um is more don't think too much because we as a beginner we always try to do things perfectly i don't want to make a mistake mm -hmm. right but the more mistake you have, that means you're closer to the deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you make a mistake, you know, you know, this thing don't work and maybe I should try a different approach. And uh, so two things, when you find out something works, keep doing that. Keep doing it, right? double down on it, do yeah. it more. Yeah, but the odd thing is when something works, people get it done as they see that it works, and somehow they want to try something new. Different, yeah. Right? And that's part of the entrepreneur mind, I guess. And the second thing is, if you see something do not work, change it yeah. and do something different. And, uh, but don't change it too soon because let's say you mail the first month and uh, you, you, you didn't have a deal. That doesn't mean the mailer don't work. Maybe you haven't tried long enough. Mm -hmm. Right, so you just have to change something. I guess if you don't have a lot of calls, that means your offer is too low. Mm -hmm. And if you get a lot of calls, no deals, that means you need to improve your negotiation skills. Mm -hmm. So reflect on that and then see what you have done wrong and then change it and try it again. You know, a lot of people in this game, and I kind of had it too, they don't have accountability. So, like, for instance, you send that mail out, you get these calls, you don't get a deal, but you have the conversations. A lot of people don't want to blame themselves like in terms of the sales because this is a sales and marketing business. Mm -hmm. So you can't just work on the systems, the marketing. You have to work on speaking to the people, being polite, listening, uh, you know, allowing them to give the offer first, things like that to get the deal. Mm -hmm. So you know it's just, it's just it's just crazy how this game is a game changer though yeah absolutely you can do it anywhere i went back to china after we spoke last time yeah i got about eight deals while a while i was in china, china. it was tough though because we don't have signal that strong i have mm -hmm. to be like hello hello uh, yeah I'll call them again right yeah so but you can do it anywhere you know no matter where you are it's and completely you know, virtual yeah completely virtual just a phone a laptop and you don't even have a big team no just myself that's wild yeah no office like you guys you know i wish <laughs> i have something like this so. <laughs> like this wow so that's another thing that's and you said 208 months by himself y'all that lets you know that if you're trying this and it's not happening, it's just a limiting belief. But like he said, learn to convince yourself that this is possible. If he could do it, I could do it, you could do it too. You gotta send the mail though, gotta do the work. Yeah. So if y'all want the plan on how to flip land, y'all know where to come. Game changes. Game changes.